welcome to the readings of William Wordsworth. To my sister, written at a small distance from my house and sent by my little boy. It is the first mild day of March, each minute sweeter than before. The red breast sings from the tall larch that stand beside our door. There is a blessing in the air, which seems a sense of joy to yield to the bare trees and mountains bare and grass in the green field. My sister, tis a wish of mine, now that our morning meal is done, make haste, your morning task resign, come forth and feel the sun. Edward will come with you and pray, put on with speed your woodland dress and bring no book for this one day will give to idleness. No joyless form shall regulate our living calendar. We from today, my friend, will date the opening of the year. Love now a universal birth, from heart to heart is stealing, from earth to man, from man to earth, it is the hour of feeling. One moment now may give us more than years of toiling reason. Our mind shall drink at every pore the spirit of the season. Some silent laws our hearts will make, which they shall long obey. We for the year to come may take our temper from today and from the blessed power that rolls about below above will frame the measure of our souls. They shall be tuned to love. Then come my sister, come I pray with speed put on your woodland dress and bring no book for this one day will give to idleness. The Fountain we talked with open heart and tongue affectionate and true, a pair of friends, though I was young, and Matthew, 72. We lay beneath a spreading oak, beside a mossy seat, and from the turf a fountain broke and gurgled at our feet. Now Matthew, said I, let us match this water's pleasant tune with some older border song or catch that suits a summer noon. Or of the church clock and the chimes, sing here beneath the shade, that half mad thing of witty rhymes, which you last April made. In silence, Matthew lay and eyed the spring beneath the trees. And thus the dear old man replied, the gray haired man of glee, no check, no stay, this streamlet fears, how merrily it goes, twill murmur on a thousand years and flow as now it flows. The world is too much with us. The world is too much with us, late and soon, getting and spending, we lay waste our powers, little we see in nature that is ours. We have given our hearts away, a sordid boon, this sea that bears her bosom to the moon, the winds that will be howling at all hours, and are upgathered now like sleeping flowers, for this, for everything, we are out of tune. It moves us not. Great God, I'd rather be a pagan suckled in a creed outworn. So might I, standing on this pleasant lee, have glimpses that would make me less forlorn, have sight of Proteus rising from the sea, or hear old Triton blow his wreathed horn. Composed upon Westminster Bridge. September 3rd, 1802. Earth has not anything to show more fair. Dull would he be of soul who could pass by, a sight so touching in its majesty. This city now doth like a garment wear, the beauty of the morning, silent, bare. Ships, towers, domes, theaters, and temples lie, open unto the fields and the sky, all bright and glittering in the smokeless air. Neither did sun, more beautifully steep in his first splendor, valley, rock, or hill. Ne'er saw I, never felt a calm so deep. The river glideth at his own sweet will. Dear God, the very houses seem asleep, and all that mighty heart is lying still. To sleep. Flock of sheep that leisurely pass by, one after one, the sound of rain and bees murmuring, the fall of rivers, winds, and seas, smooth fields, white sheets of water, and pure sky. I have thought of all by turns, and yet I lie sleepless 
and soon the small bird's melodies must hear, first uttered from my orchard trees, and the first cuckoo's melancholy cry. Even thus last night and two nights more, I lay and could not win me sleep by any stealth. So do not let me wear tonight away. Without thee, what is all the morning's wealth? Come, blessed barrier between day and day, dear mother of fresh thoughts and joyous health. She was a phantom of delight. She was a phantom of delight when first she gleamed upon my sight, a lovely apparition sent to be a moment's ornament. Her eyes as stars of twilight fair, like twilights too, her dusky hair, but all things else about her drawn from May time and the cheerful dawn, a dancing shape, an image gay, to haunt, to startle and waylay. I saw her upon nearer view, a spirit, yet a woman too. Her household motions light and free and steps of virgin liberty, a countenance in which did meet sweet records, promises as sweet, a creature not too bright or good for human nature's daily food, for transient sorrows, simple wiles, praise, blame, love, kisses, tears, and smiles. And now I see with eyes serene the very pulse of the machine, a being breathing thoughtful breath, a traveler between life and death, the reason firm, the temperate will, endurance, foresight, strength, and skill, a perfect woman, nobly planned, to warn, to comfort, and command, and yet a spirit still and bright, with something of an angel light. I wandered lonely as a cloud. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze, Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in a sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not be but gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth this show to me had brought. For oft when on my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. My heart leaps up. My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. So was it when my life began. So is it now I am a man. So be it when I shall grow old, or let me die. The child is father of the man. I could wish my days to be bound each to each by natural piety. Six years old. O oh, thou whose fancies from afar are brought, who of thy words dost make a mock apparel and fittest to unutterable thought, the breeze-like motion and the self-born carol, thou fairy voyager that dost float in such clear water that thy boat may rather seem to brood on air than on an earthly stream, suspended in a stream as clear as sky, where earth and heaven do make one imagery. O blessed vision, happy child, thou art so exquisitely wild. I think of thee with, me with many fears, for what may be thy lot in future years. I thought of times when pain might be thy guest, Lord of thy house and hospitality, and grief, uneasy lover, never rest. But when she sat within the touch of thee, O oh, too industrious folly, O oh, vain and causeless melancholy, nature will either end thee quite or lengthening out thy season of delight, preserve for thee by individual right, a young lamb's heart, among the full-grown flocks. What hast thou to do with sorrow or the injuries of tomorrow? Thou art a dewdrop, which the morn brings forth, ill-fitted to sustain unkindly shocks or to be trailed along the soiling earth, a gem that glitters while it lives and no forewarning gives, but at the touch of wrong without a strife, slips in a moment out of life. 
Intimations of Immortality from Recollections of Early Childhood. There was a time when meadow, grove, and stream, the earth and every common sight, to me did seem apparelled in celestial light, the glory and the freshness of a dream. It is not now as it hath been of yore, turn wheresoe'er I may, by night or day, the things which I have seen I now can see no more. The rainbow comes and goes, and lovely is the rose, the moon doth with delight look round her when the heavens are bare, waters on a starry night are beautiful and fair. The sunshine is a glorious birth, but yet I know, wherever I go, that there hath passed away a glory from the earth. Now while the birds thus sing a joyous song, and while the young lambs bound as to the tabor sound, to me alone there came a thought of grief. A timely utterance gave that thought relief, and again I am strong. The cataracts blow their trumpets from the steep. No more shall grief of mine the season wrong. I hear the echoes through the mountains throng. The winds come to me from fields of sleep, and all the earth is gay, land and sea. Give themselves up to jollity, and with the earth the, and with the heart of May doth every beast keep holiday. Thou child of joy, shout round to me. Hear, let me hear thy shouts, thou happy shepherd boy. Yet blessed creatures, I have heard the call. Ye to each other make. I see the heavens laugh with you in your jubilee. My heart is at your festival. My head hath its coronal. The fullness of your bliss I feel. I feel it all. O oh, evil day, if I were sullen, while earth herself is adorning, this sweet May morning, and the children are calling on every side, in thousands of valleys far and wide, fresh flowers while the sun shines warm, and the babe leaps up on his mother's arm. I hear, I hear, with joy, I hear. But there's a tree of many one, a single field which I have looked upon, both of them speak of something that is gone. The pansy at my feet doth the same tale repeat, whither is fled the visionary gleam? Where is it now, the glory and the dream? Our birth is but a sleep and a forgetting. The soul that rises with us, our life star, hath had elsewhere its setting, and now cometh from afar, not in entire forgetfulness and not in utter nakedness, but trailing clouds of glory do we come from God who is our home. Heaven lies about us in our infancy. Shades of the prison house begin to close upon the growing boy, but he beholds the light, and whence it flows, he sees it in his joy. The youth who travel farther from the east must travel, still is nature's priest, and by the vision splendid is on his way attended. At length the man perceives it die away and fade into the light of common day. Earth fills her lap with pleasures of her own, yearnings she hath in her own natural kind, and even with something of a mother's mind and no unworthy aim, the homely nurse doth all she can to make her foster child, her inmate man, forget the glories he hath known and that imperial palace whence he came. That's it today for William Wordsworth. Thank you so much for listening, and until next time, Good night, stars.